Hey everyone, this is Jerem and this is College Pro Tips, a series where I give advice to those of you who are in college, people send in questions, or I just talk about whatever's on my mind for the day. Uh, today we have a question sent in by one of you, and the question is, here in Canada, where I live, we only have 11 years of school before college. I think it's 12 for you, right? Yes, that is correct, it is. Uh, and I applied about a month ago at a college nearby of where I live. Two days ago, I received a letter from the college saying I was accepted. I am going into computer science technology, and I want to maybe become a programmer. Do you have any tips for a future programmer? Well, first of all, uh, congratulations for getting into college, for getting accepted. It sounds like that's the your first choice there, so good job. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to have an awesome time. Now, tips for a future programmer. Full disclosure, uh, I love computers. Um, I build computers. I do IT work, all kinds of stuff like that, but I am not a computer programmer. The only programming I've ever done is QBasic, and that was when I was like 10 years old going to like a summer technology camp. I know, I know, you're probably thinking, wow, this guy goes to summer technology camp, how cool is he? Uh, anyway, um, so I'm not a programmer, but if I was going to give you any advice from what I know of programming, it's you need to be detail focused and you need to practice, 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 because from what I can tell, good programming is half ingenuity and half just raw practice and learning all the stuff. I'm not the type of person who's super accurate when I type. I end up having to go back and edit a lot. Uh, my wife is actually very accurate when she types, and that's good because she's a web designer and she types a lot of code every single day. And uh, if she wasn't accurate, her stuff wouldn't work. And uh, as a computer programmer, it's going to be a, the same thing. Um, you know, there are places online where you can go and, uh, you know, do programming practice and stuff like that. I don't know if I would do that now just because you haven't learned anything about it yet, I'm assuming. Um, so you might want to learn a little bit, you know, start doing your classes and then see kind of what they're teaching you. And then see if there's other resources you can do, uh, what el whatever else you can get into to just practice, 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 practice. Um, but beyond that, I mean... Any tips I could give you would really just be, uh, maybe I can kind of base this off what I know of graphic design. You know, I am a graphic designer. In graphic design, we are encouraged to be kind of a jack of all trades. You know, so it's good that I'm, uh, I'm decent at layout. I'm decent at uh, photo manipulation. I'm not great at illustration, but I can do illustration. Um, you know, I've got a bunch of different things I can do. I I'm good at typography, stuff like that. And then it's good to pick one thing and become really, really good at it. So I try to learn as many graphic design disciplines as possible. And then the thing I'm really, really good at, and of course, really, really good is relative. I'm not saying like I'm the most amazing designer ever or anything far from it. But the, uh, the things I would be good at would be photo manipulation uh, and layout. Those are the things I spend the most of my time on and photo editing. So like I'm wide on a lot of subjects, but I'm also deep on a couple. And from what I know of programming, it's similar. You want to be at least fluent in quite a few different design language or programming languages. And then you want to be a master at one or two of them. And of course, you're not going to be a master your first year at college or your second or your third, or maybe even when you graduate, that's something you keep practicing and learning as you go. Um, but that's what I would encourage you to do is kind of figure out what language you want to specialize in and preferably pick a programming language that's going to be very widely used and people are getting paid good money to use and then uh, get really, really awesome at that, but then try to be at least fluent in a, all the other major ones that you can so that you look more attractive to an employer because there might be an awesome job opportunity and everything about it is good except for the fact that they are in a programming language that you're not super awesome in. But if you are fluent in it, you can always practice and get a little bit better. So uh, anyway, guys, that's that's all I want to talk about for today. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, send them in to me. And otherwise, have a great day.